Good afternoon, my name is Elroy Ashton Jr. and I'm a software engineer on the Intel XDK team. Um, I'm here today to give a presentation on the Intel XDK IoT edition as well as a demo on Bluetooth Low Energy using a few applications developed with the Intel XDK IoT edition. One running on the Intel Edison, which would be a Node.js application, and another application, which is a hybrid HTML5 application running on these two mobile applications here. Okay. So one of the things to just let you know, um, in regards to getting started with everything I'm gonna talk about during this presentation, you can kind of find a lot of that information on software.intel.com slash IoT. So they have the getting started manuals, a lot of information on our samples, as well as um, more information about the Edison, the Intel XDK IoT edition, and everything IoT in regards to Intel. Okay. So, the first thing that I'll kind of step through is really the Intel XDK as a tool. So Intel as a company, we, we decided to invest in Intel XDK because we wanted to increase our developer influence in the market in terms of mobile. So we started with developing hybrid HTML5 applications here with the Intel XDK so that we can address the needs of web developers as well as new developers into the market in regards to creating applications that run on Android, iOS, Windows Phone, and various other platforms. So as you can see here, the IoT edition is really a superset of that actual tool where you can also create Node.js applications that run on Intel IoT platforms such as Intel Edison, Galileo, and other devices. So one of the things that I'll talk about first is really the Intel XDK as a tool, because since the IoT edition is built on top of the XDK, it's kind of good to kind of understand all the features that's involved. So one of the things about the Intel XDK as a tool, we kind of cover the entire application development lifecycle. From development here, as you can see with our editor, all the way to the build tab. And one of the things that we try to do is at least give developers the opportunity to actually see how their applications would work and function and feel on certain devices. So we actually have an emulator that kind of simulates what the application would look like on this particular device based on the resolution and screen size, as well as a list of other devices that you can kind of simulate what it would actually adapt and respond to based on the device itself. And we also have an application in the App Store right now called Intel App Preview. So you can develop your app with XDK in HTML, JavaScript, CSS, and actually test it out on your different mobile platforms instead of actually having to build and have the APK or the IPA file to actually install on your mobile devices. And then we have even more, a deeper dive into debugging, which is pretty much just the ability to add breakpoints, do profiling, and, it's, and it really leverages the Chrome developer tools. So it's pretty familiar to any web developer that's already developed applications for the web. And the most popular feature of, of the XDK is the ability to build applications for mobile. And the reason why I'm kind of touching on this is because like, I leverage XDK to develop the mobile applications in the demo that I'll cover in the end. So you can create Android, iOS, and other platforms as I mentioned before here. So one of the things that is much more interesting to the folks here in the room is the Node.js side. So XDK also allows you to write your Node.js or bring in your Node.js applications and run them on an Intel Edison board that I have here or a Galileo. And it's pretty simple to do, especially because of the Intel IoT developer kit that we have online right now that allows you to leverage the XDK or any other tool for Node.js development in regards to what you are already familiar with, right? And the projects are pretty much the same as what you would use today in regards to its structure with the package.json where you would cover all your node modules as well as your, your main.js or any other JavaScript files that you kind of have here. And really we kind of try to simplify the development process here with this tool in regards to developing for IoT or even using Node.js here. We don't have any other tabs besides develop, right? Because you're developing your code and, and pretty much you're uploading it to your actual board or running it or debugging it as these buttons kind of declare at the bottom here. One of the cool things that we wanted to do as well 
and give you a bit more freedom is have the opportunity to include uh, an SSH terminal so you can access your board, similar to using PuTTY, and um, a serial terminal so you can talk, communicate with your board using uh, just USB as well. But primarily for the XCK, we use the buttons up here, the, the menu, as an opportunity to actually upload your projects. So I'm gonna just dive into the demo that I kind of had prepared. So one of the things that I wanted to kind of showcase is the, the opportunity to leverage Bluetooth on an Intel Edison board, right? Because one of the, sell, the, the selling features of Intel Edison versus Galileo is that it has built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And all of our mobile, most of the new mobile devices out there have built-in Bluetooth and Bluetooth Low Energy right now. So as we've probably realized with a lot of different applications that's coming out on different home solutions and different internet of things, they communicate through Bluetooth as well as Wi-Fi and other protocols. So here in this demo that I kind of have set up is just an Edison that's going to be running this um, project that I kind of created and I leveraged two node modules that allows you to access Bluetooth on the board, which is right here. So I use Noble and I use uh, Bluno. So these two allow me to set up a Bluetooth peripheral for the Edison in regard, oh, set it up as a Bluetooth peripheral so that it can set, advertise its presence, similar to what you do now with your headsets, your Bluetooth headsets, right? You turn it on, it's, it advertises position or it's, its presence, and you use your phone to connect to it. So the Edison is kind of gonna do that same functionality and action, and then the mobile devices will act as a central entity in which it then connects with the Edison, reads data from the Edison, writes to the Edison. So in any case, you can actually do more with it, but for this demo, I'm just gonna showcase how you can just read data and write data. And if we kind of take a look at the, the code here, the main components of communication between the mobile devices, which will be the central and the Edison's, that the Edison that would be the peripheral, is that communication requires the services ID and the characteristics ID because both of those identifiers are used in order to create a layer of communication so that it knows which service or item that you're trying to talk to or get data from. And these are the, the items that I'll be using in a demo as well. And you can also kind of, if we go through the code a little bit, you can see that it handles all the different uh, callbacks and use cases in regards to reading and writing, as I mentioned before. So if so in order to get started with XDK and Edison to do Node.js Node development, you just have to find your board in the drop-down list. I've already connected the Edison to the internet. So both the Intel XDK and the Edison has to be in the same network connection. And what's happening or what's enabling the communication is the use of a daemon that's running on the Intel uh, Edison board so that it, it enables communication through WebSockets between the XDK and the Edison board near real time. So I'll just uh, enter my password to connect. Okay. So once you're connected, you can upload your project, you can install the, the NPM modules declared in your package.json, as well as run the project. So what I'll do is I'll run the project here. Okay, it says our application is running. Stop that, color it, okay. So as you can see here, so what I'm doing is just making the Edison board advertise its presence, and it's gonna communicate via the service and characteristics identifiers. So I have the iOS device as well as the Android device here with the application that I created on the Intel XDK that you saw earlier on. So if I click on the BLE Central on the iOS device as well as on the Android device. So it's requesting that I turn on my Bluetooth because what I'm doing with the HTML5 hybrid application that's running on the iOS and Android device is that I'm leveraging Apache Cordova plugins so that I can access native features on the actual device so that I can do more with it besides the typical HTML5 or JavaScript functionality that's limited to the browser. So I'll turn on the Bluetooth. So like I mentioned before, we have the service and uh, characteristics UUIDs that we use to communicate with the board and actually identify and find it. 
So what, we can, what I can do here is I can input the service UUID, so which is FC00, and scan for that actual device. And I'll scan with the Android device without the service UUID in there. And if there's any other devices in the room or around that it can pick up, then it'll actually find it, or it won't find the actual device based on the fact that it doesn't know the service UUID. So with the iOS device, I was able to pick up the Intel Edison based on its service UUID. So I can select the Edison, and now it's asking for the characteristics UUID as well, because it requires that as part of the handshake and communication exchange. So FC0, F, do that. So one of the things that you'll see here with these applications is that the data that it's reading is coming from the Edison via Bluetooth, not Wi-Fi, not any other type of protocol. And the data that it's expecting to get back will be this value as it's used in regards to any read requests. And when I do a write, I overload that value with data that's, expect that's coming from the mobile device, which should say, hello from my mobile device. So if I go back to the mobile devices here, I say, read data, I get the hello world. And then if I go to do a write, it writes that data to the Edison, and you can actually see in the console logs based on those requests that was made. And if I do a read data, it reads me back the same data that I actually wrote to it earlier on. So if we go back to the, wait, hold on, what's this? Yeah, we go back to the iOS device, you can actually see the hello from mobile device. So one of the cool things about IoT Edition that I want to just highlight is the fact that we offer the ability to start from multiple projects, and you're not just limited to the projects that we offer. So here we kind of just provide the simple, tip, typical template that you would find in our Arduino um, tool or, or some other tool that helps you with creating IoT or embedded applications that leverages Node.js and other Node modules that you would typically use today and you can just import your node modules today as well. And that's the end of my presentation. Any questions? Sure. The source code for the project? Yeah, the project is actually in the XDK, so you can find it on GitHub or even come to the XDK or go to software.intel.com and we have an article out there on the project as well. Yeah, both, both applications. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the node application is actually running on the Intel Edison right here. And it's just communicating between the mobile device here and the Edison. They're just going back and forth. The XDK is just that component that allows you to upload and run the application here, and then it's just between these two guys. So the question that I had, though, was that mm -hmm. there's, by default, when you just install the Edison, yeah. uh, it's going to have, no doubt, it's going to give you, like, stats. Mm -hmm. Is it going to run it? Is it replacing that, or is it running it separately? It's running it separately. It's totally different. It doesn't replace it. No other questions? Okay, thank you very much for letting me take my time.